your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to open them with me to the book of Joshua in the first chapter. In the first chapter. And this morning, I, uh, the Lord has given me a message for this particular first service. I won't be sharing this message in the next service. I have a, a totally different message for the next service. But I, I believe that this first service is special. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about short bus with the helmet type of special. Come on, son. I'm talking about there's some special people that come to Victory Outreach in this first service. How many could just agree with that? How many feel like God's got something special for you? And so I have a message the Lord has given me this morning for you that I'll be speaking specifically to you out of Joshua chapter 1. I believe it's prophetic. I'm a prophetic preacher. I'm a preacher. I'm not a teacher. I'm a preacher. I'm not a teacher. I'm a preacher. I, 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 I preach it. And sometimes the Lord will give me messages like the one he's given me this morning. Joshua chapter 1. We're going to begin reading here in verse 10. And when you have it, say amen. Okay, the Bible reads this way. It says, then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, pass through the camp and command the people, saying, prepare provisions for yourself. For within three days, you will cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord has given you to possess. How many are ready to go in? How many are ready to take possession of every promise? that God has for your life. Go on down to verse 16. Look at what the people said. I love when people talk back to the preacher. Can I hear an amen? This was a good church because they talked back to the preacher. In verse 16, they, they answered Joshua saying, all that you command us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we heeded Moses in all things, so we will heed you. Only the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. And this is this what tells you this was a great church. I love this. It says, whoever rebels against your command and does not heed your word in all that you command them, we're going to put them to death. I like that church. Amen. Let me go. I'm no, just kidding. Then they said, only be strong and of good courage. Before you're seated, look at two people and tell them, only be strong and of good courage. Or I'm going to kill you. No, I'm just kidding. Don't tell them that. <laughs> you may be seated this morning. How many of you are feeling good this morning? How many are you feeling blessed this morning? How many of you are refreshed this morning? I feel great. I feel the Lord has placed a word in my heart for you. This morning, I want to talk to you about a subject that I think is so important, especially for the season that we are in as a people. I want to talk to you about transition. Transition. Everyone say that with me. Say transition. transition. And what I want to talk to you about is transitioning into God's promise for your life. What does the word transition mean? In, in the Webster's Dictionary, transition means the process or a period of changing from one state or condition to another. I, I want to say it again because I want you to get excited about this. The word transition means the process or period of changing from one state or condition to another. And I don't know what condition you find yourself coming into this new year. I don't know what stage you find yourself coming into this new year. But I want to say something prophetically to each and every person in this place this morning. I want to let you know that a shift in your life is about to happen. Amen. Woo, come on, somebody. 
a shift in your life is about to happen. In 2018, you might have went through some sickness in your body, but a shift is about to happen. In 2018, you might have had some financial struggles, but a shift is about to happen. In 2018, you might be frustrated about a thing or two, but I came to tell you a shift is about to happen. You're going through a transition, and I need you to get excited about what God is about to release within your life. Somebody say transition. transition. See, in the word of God, there are many examples and transition is peppered throughout the scriptures. These are different people who experience transition from one place to another. Can I talk about it for a minute? The Jews transitioned from slavery to freedom. Joseph transitioned from the pit to the palace. Paul transitioned from being a persecutor to being a preacher. From an unbeliever to a believer, from a student to being a teacher, from a reader to being a writer. Come on, talk to me in this place. The prophet Elisha transitioned from being a student or, 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 or a disciple to being a prophet. And Jesus himself went through many transitions. Jesus had multiple transitions. He transitioned from heaven to earth. He transitioned from being God to being a man. From being a creator to being a creature. Come on, talk to me. From the cross to being seated at the right hand of the Father. And how many know he will transition when he comes back for a church that loves him? He's coming back to earth to rule and to reign. I thought you'd get more happy about transition in this place. Here's what I want to say to you this morning is that anyone who ever moved into God's plan had to transition. I want you to touch your neighbor this morning and tell them it's time for you to transition. Ooh, this is good. Come on, talk to them. It's time for you to transition. Some of you are not talking to your neighbor. Maybe you don't like the person you're sitting next to. But may, whether you like them or not, I want you to touch them this morning and tell them, get ready. It's your time to transition. It's time for God to take you to a new level. God is taking you into your promised territory. Oh, man. Come on, somebody. See, this week we gathered together in prayer, didn't we? And as we came together in prayer this week, we, we came to seek the voice in the face of God. You felt it. You could feel that when people walked into this place, they, they, they wanted to separate themselves unto prayer and seek the Lord's face. And many of us said, Lord, speak to me. How many of you this week God spoke to you? And, and that was my posture coming into the house of the Lord this week. I said, God, I need you to speak to me. I need you to get personal with me. And it was on Tuesday when I was praying at home and I had the whole house to myself. And I was just seeking God that that's when the power of God showed up. How many know God will show up in your life? He will show up in your life. And the power of God showed up in my house. And God began to speak to me some things that are very personal to me. And one of the things that God spoke to me is he spoke to me about you. Touch your neighbor and say, God's talking about you. Woo, this is good. He spoke to me about you. And he said this, he says, I want you to let my people know that I am opening up their future. I want you to let my people know that their best years are not behind them, but the best is yet to come. And, and I want to tell you that this time of your life, you must transition. See, what led me to this story, God led me to this story because in order to step into the future, the people of God must transition. And if the truth be told, you know that you have had many transitions within your life. Life is full of transition. Life, everything in life is about transition. We transition from being a child to being an adult. We transition from being a student to working. The other day, my daughter, Samara, was speaking in the kitchen, and she said, I don't ever want to grow up. Amen. She says, because when you grow up, you have to pay bills. You transition. You transition from a youth to a young adult. You transition from a young adult to a seasoned adult. Lately, I have been transitioning to being a seasoned adult. And I don't like it. 
I don't like being a seasoned adult. I don't like it. You know, uh, and, and when I hit 42, I hit 42 years old a couple years ago, I woke up one morning and 42 hit me back. <laughs> now, I know there's some people here that know what I'm talking about because when you hit 50, 50 hits you pretty hard. Come on. And I hear when you hit 60, it's no joke. And there might even be a couple people here that hit 70, and you know what I'm talking about when I talk about transition. See, I knew that life had hit me when we went to Hawaii. And, and my wife and our family went to Hawaii, uh, I think it was last year, and, and we went to the North Shore. And we went to the North Shore where they have the big 100-foot waves and all the surfers are out. And, and uh, they said, there's this cliff there, Pastor, that everybody jumps off the cliff. Are you down? <laughs> I said, how high is the cliff? They said, it's about 50 feet. I said, I'm down, I'm down. I'm down to do it. And we got to the beach there. There was all these skinny young people up there, <laughs> Hawaiians, and, you know, they're all up there, skinny with their abs and all that. Can I hear an amen? And, and they're all up there hanging out on this huge rock, and my kids right away, they said, we're going up, we're going up. So they all one by one started climbing this huge rock, and I said, I'm going up too, man. So I started going up there, and everyone's jumping off, and people are doing backflips off this rock, and gainers off this rock and I climbed up this rock and, and then right when I get to the top of the rock there's this little girl right there and she says if you look down you won't jump <laughs> and in my spirit I said shut up amen <laughs> and what I did is I got to the end of the rock and I've never been afraid to do any of these things I go on roller coasters I do all kinds of stuff but when I got on this rock I kind of took her advice I didn't look down and I just jumped off the rock and for 50 feet I went down and when I hit the water I hit the bottom of the ocean and I sprung up out of the water looking like Baywatch but something hit me and when I started coming out of the water, man, I felt things in my body I had never felt before. I felt dizzy. I was like dizzy. I had this weird buzz in my head. I started to have like an anxiety attack and something inside of me said, what in the world are you doing? You're 40 years old. You're not a spring chicken anymore. And I got out, and I was trying to play it cool. Like, that was great. That was fun. But inside, I was having an anxiety attack. Something was happening. I thought I, was, I, I, thought I faced death. I was traumatized. I was shaking. It was weird. And I'll tell you, man, I don't move as fast as I used to. My body said something to me that day. It said, hello, you are transitioning. You are changing. My body doesn't move as fast as it once did. I forget things now. I don't always remember the things that I say. Truth be told, I get a little bit more grumpier, a little bit more easy. Come on, somebody. But then one day, I woke up and I said to myself, self, you ever talk to yourself? I said, you better, he, I said to myself, self, you better get used to this. You better find a way to operate in this new season of your life. Why am I saying this to you? Because if I'm telling the truth, Many people do not enter into the promise that God has for them because they have not learned to handle transition well. They can't handle the transition. We've watched them struggle. We preach to them every week. We watch them struggle. We, we minister to them week in and week out. We watch them struggle. God is saying, I want to shift you. God is saying, I want to take you to another level. God is saying, I want to bring you out of the wilderness and bring you into the promised land. Come on, somebody. But we find that some people can't go in because they don't know how to handle transition. And what did I come to tell you on this first Sunday of the year? I came to tell you God is saying we must transition. 
We must change. We must alter our life. We must be willing to step out of the old and step into the new. And for people that know how to do it, this is your moment to give God praise for it. Because you know that if you do it, God will meet you in the place he is calling you to go. Come on and give God praise. He, he, is, he will meet you in the place he is calling you to go. Life is full of transition. We transition from new believer to follower. We transition from disciple to leader. We transition from single person to married person. We transition. And if you look back at your life, if you take a moment to look back at your life, you will realize that your greatest seasons of joy and breakthrough have had everything to do with how you have handled transition within your life. See, look at my life this morning. How many going to look at your pastor for a minute? Watch. My life has been a life of transition. I transitioned from cameraman to Bible study leader. I transitioned from Bible study leader to discipleship home leader, from discipleship home leader to UTC director, from UTC director to college graduate and homeowner, from moving from L.A. to the East Coast to L.A. to San Diego, from local pastor to regional pastor to to multi-regional pastor to elder. And I came to tell you my life has been full of transition, but God is not done with me yet. What are the new levels that God wants to take you to this year? What are the new changes that God wants to bring about? This is your moment. This is your time. You need the transition. You need to step into your promise this year. Tell your neighbor, you got to transition. Just like Israel transitioned from slavery to the promised land. I came to tell you a church will transition. A church will transition. Do you know that this church has transitioned? In our history, our church has been through many transitions. We transitioned from pioneering to having people, from hardcore people to families, from families to young adults. We transitioned. We transitioned from fundraising, selling tamales, and you know, you know, finding ways to raise money to being a tithing church. We transitioned from being a tithing church to being a church that not only tithes but steps out in faith pledge and fulfills those pledges for the glory of God. A church will go through transition. We transition from being renters of buildings to being the owner of a building. Come on, you got to get excited about it. See, people who get excited understand that we must transition. We transitioned from being a renter of a building to being an owner of a building. We went from transition from having debt to having no debt. You ain't saying nothing to me. And guess what? We're getting ready to go through another transition. Because we've grown. We went from having 100 people to 200 people to 400 people to 800 people to over 1,000 people. We've transitioned from a local ministry to a regional ministry to a worldwide influence. And guess what? We're going to push the wall back and we're going to begin to break into a new transition. My question is, who's going to be a part of the next transition? Who's going to find their place in this ministry? And you say, I'm not going to stay behind. I'm not going to stay in the wilderness. I'm not going to stay stuck in old behaviors I'm not going to stay stuck in an old mentality is there anyone here this morning that says it's time to transition it's time to move to another level everybody say transition this is your year to transition this is your year to transition my goal this year is to transition you My goal this year is to transition you. My goal this year is to light a fire under you for transition. Don't come to me about old things. Don't come to me about old drama. Don't come to me about old problems. Recognize this is your year. You're not the man that you used to be. You're not the woman that you're used to be. It's your time to transition. You're going from being beat up to having the victory. You're going from sickness to health. You're going from financial breakdown to financial breakout. Come on, somebody. This is your year to transition. My assignment from God this year is to transition you. To transition you from being flaky in the house of God to being faithful in the house of God. This is my assignment from the Lord. To transition you from being a part-time believer to being a full-time disciple of Jesus Christ. This is my plan. This is my job this year from God. To transition you from having marital problems to having victory in your home. Come on, somebody. It's time to transition. It's time to go to another level. It's time to go from faithfulness to fruitfulness. 
Woo, we're transitioning. We're transitioning. This year is the year to transition. And whatever does not transition eventually dies. A plant that does not transition will die in a wilderness state. A plant that does not transition will wither when it does refuses to bloom. And I came to tell you, this is your year to bloom. This is your year to bloom. This morning, we take our lead from Joshua chapter 1, and there are four Ps that we read about in the scripture when Joshua was commanded to transition the people into the promised land. The first P is that he told them, prepare yourself. I want you to say that to your neighbor. Say, you need to prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Joshua told the people to prepare themselves. He says, prepare yourself to cross over. And to be prepared means to get the supplies ready. Begin to gather the supplies that you might need in order to step into the promise that God has for you. You see, do it now is what he was telling him. The Bible says he walked through the camp and he said, do it now. Everybody say, do it now. Do not wait. Do not wait till tomorrow morning. Do not wait till when you feel good. Do not wait until the sun is shining on you in the right direction. Do it now. Whatever state or condition you find yourself in, do it now. Someone say, do it now. Don't wait until it's too late. Why does God raise up others past those who sometimes have been faithful? Is because those are the people that are willing to do what God says to do, and they're willing to do it now. They don't wait. They don't delay. They don't, uh, they don't make excuses. They just say, Lord, you said move, so I'm going to do it now. Someone say, do it now. See, people who die in the wilderness are people who were not prepared. <laughs> people who fail to step into the promise are people who were unprepared when God said it's time to move. It's time to run. Ladies can relate with this. There's some ladies here that, that wherever you go, you always have two pairs of shoes. Come on, you got the shoes you look good in, right? These are my good-looking shoes. I wear these. I want to look good. But then, you know, you got to be ready. Come on, somebody. You got to be ready. So you, you get another pair of shoes in your, in your bag or your purse, and you put them on when it's time to move, when it's time to run. Somebody talk to me in this place. I guess that's the question for you this morning. Are you prepared to run with God? God's saying, I'm getting ready to run. I'm getting ready to move, and I need you to prepare now. He told the children of Israel, he says, prepare now, because in three days, I'm going to do something you've never seen before. Prepare now, because I'm going to release a blessing in your life like you've never seen before, and I want you to be ready. See, I know what some of you are thinking right now. You're, you're saying, what state am I in? I came to tell you that 2018 in your life, was a year of preparation. 2018 and 2017 and 2016, these were years in your life of preparation. God is already preparing you. God has already gotten you ready for where he wants to take you. Everything you went through last year, every battle, every storm, every situation, every time you open up that word and God spoke to you, every time you prayed, every time you sacrificed, every time you gave, every time you, you didn't satisfy your flesh and you were obedient to God, I came to tell you it was a time of preparation. And now as we get ready to go in, watch this, we're not going in weak, we're going in ready. We're going in stronger than we've ever been. We're going in with more life. Can I hear an amen? amen? We're going in with more wisdom. You're going in and you're not going in weak. Somebody say prepare. prepare. The second thing he tells them is to purge yourself. Purge yourself. Tell your neighbor, purge yourself. Another way to put it is cleanse yourself. 
get dirty things out of your life. Woo! Dirty birds can't go into the promised land. God's looking for some doves that want to go in. And he tells the people, in order to go in, you've got to purge yourself. The word purge means to rid of an unwanted quality, condition, or feeling. What God is saying is that there are things in your life that you cannot take in with you. There are things that the reason you are down and the reason you remain in the old state is because you've allowed things in your life that drain you of your power. <laughs> they drain you of your power. You spend more time on Facebook than in prayer. You ain't talking to me in this place. <laughs> you spend more time gossiping with your friends than sitting under the teaching and the word of God. You spend more time hanging out with compromisers than preaching the gospel to people who are hurting. This year, if you're going to go in, you're going to have to clean some things up. Another way to put it is it's time to get your house in order. Daddy, are you here? Big Daddy, Big Papa, you're the king of the house. You're the priest of the home. I'm the man. I'm the man. I pay the bills. I bring home the bacon. What's the condition of your house? <laughs> Yeah, you bring home on the bacon, but your kids are all running wild. Yeah, you, you provide, but nobody prays. Yeah, you provide, but everybody's sick in body. Yes, you provide, but this one has this hang up, and that one has that hang up. And I want to talk to the men for a minute. If we're going to go in, you better get right. <laughs> you, better, you better get right. You better get your house in order. Before you can get your house in order, you got to get your life in order. If you didn't come to one night of the prayer week, you were already messed up. <laughs> you didn't come to one single night to pray. Your priorities are out of order. I came to tell you, you will not have the victory. But if you want the victory, it's not too late to make that change this morning. Come on, somebody, because it's time to purge. It's time to cleanse ourselves of the things that have held us back for too long. See, to be honest, some people have money, but they have no peace. They have activity, but no productivity. They have people in their life, but they have no real friends. They have jobs, but they have no time for their family, no time for the ministry. They have an image of self, but they have no true joy and no true happiness and no true sense of fulfillment. And it's time to take those things that have been holding you back. It's time to take those things that have been renting space in your mind and renting space in your life and it's time to serve those things an eviction notice <laughs> I see some of you making a contract right now that says it's time for you to leave it's time for you to get out of my life I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus I'm getting ready to transition can anybody give God praise for this word when you evict those things that drain you of your power, you create space for God to show up in a new and living way. When you empty out the rooms of your heart, that's when the Holy Spirit could come in and give you the power and give you the joy and give you the praise and give you the blessing that you have been looking for. We are transitioning. Someone say purge. The third thing he tells the people is to position yourself, position yourself. Position yourself for the assignment that God wants to give you. See, I came to tell you that everything we've been through has been preparation for the position that God is going to open up. When the Lord said, I'm going to open up your future, what God is saying is I'm going to take you and I'm going to transition you from the position you were in to the position that I want you to be in. I'm, I'm going to orchestrate everything in your life so that you can be successful in the next level. I came to tell you that God did not call the children of Israel to fail, and God has not called you to fail. 
That's good news for somebody because you know what it is to fail. You know what it is to fall short. But I came to tell you failure is not your ultimate calling. You may have some failure. You may have some slips up, slip ups. You might mess up from time to time. But God's will for you is not to fail. God wants to position you for victory. He wants to position your life for victory. But sometimes you're going to go through some things that don't make sense. Sometimes you're going to go through some situations in your life that seem like things are out of control. And when things get out of control, am I talking to anybody this morning? When things get out of control and they seem like they're not making sense, don't get mad. Don't, don't get mad. When things are out of control and don't make sense and your boyfriend breaks up with you out of the blue, or your girlfriend stops talking to you or this person that you used to be connected with now doesn't give you the time of day. Don't don't get mad. Don't freak out. Don't start telling people off. Don't go on Facebook and start commenting and don't get mad at the church. Don't get mad at the church. Well, the church is not the same, and the church is this, and the church is that. And don't get mad at the preacher. Don't get mad at your leaders. In other words, don't freak out. When things don't make sense, just say, God must be repositioning me. God must be moving me into position for the perfect plan that he has for my life. And I came to tell you, God will do it. When God wants to begin to break you through one of the greatest indications in your life that you are about to break through is that your life begins to experience a certain level of chaos, a certain level of confusion. Certain things begin to happen where it seems like it doesn't make sense. You say, God, haven't I been faithful? God, haven't I been here? God, haven't I been praying? God, haven't I been giving? And God is saying to you, don't worry about it, baby. I'm I'm just moving you into the place that I have for you. I'm moving you into the promise. How many are ready to go into the promise? How many are ready to move into the place that you're supposed to be in? See, you're not supposed to be here just warming up you. You're supposed to be a leader. You're supposed to be a champion. You're supposed to be a child of God. Come on, come on, somebody. Get a hold of this word. You're not called to be lukewarm. You're not called to be average. You're not called to be like everybody else. You're supposed to be on fire and filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. You're transitioning. You're transitioning. God's moving you into the place that he wants you to be. And I want to tell you, when you get there, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Tell your neighbor, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. That when you get there, everything you need is going to be there for you. <laughs> Don't be surprised that when you get there. Yeah, you might have lost some old relationships. But the minute you step in, there's going to be a whole bunch of next level relationships waiting for you. <laughs> Don't be surprised that when you're obedient to God and you do what the Lord commands you to do, that the minute you step on the scene, all the tools you're going to need are going to be there. In your old job, you had to buy tools. In this job, they're going to give you the tools. You ain't saying nothing to me in this place. Don't be surprised that the minute you leave that old job and you leave those things that have been holding you back and you start committing and doing what the Lord commanded, that all of a sudden all the resources and all the joy and all the power, and you're going to feel a new anointing in your life. That's how we came out this week, man. I came to tell you, I came out feeling a new anointing because God says, I've taken you out of the old and I'm bringing you into the new. Come on and give God a big praise right now. Come on, give God a big, big praise. I'm done preaching. And the final P, the final P, did you get something this morning? When you transition, how many are ready to transition? When you transition, God says, prepare, purge, position, but then lastly, it's showtime. Tell your neighbor, it's showtime. He tells the children of Israel, it's time to perform. The reason people get kicked out of the promised land is because they weren't prepared, they weren't purged, and they weren't positioned to perform. That's why everything you went through last year was so vital, and I'm glad you made it. 
That tells me you were willing to endure the process of preparation in your life. But now as we go into a new year and we get ready to go into this new territory, I came to tell you it's showtime, baby. <laughs> it's showtime. When David came out of that shepherd field, come on, somebody. And he saw that Philistine mocking the armies of God. And everybody else was frightened and everybody else was scared. But David had been in a place of preparation. David had been in a place of purging and David had been positioned in his father's field and they said you're too young to fight he says boy you don't understand where I have been you don't understand what kind of year I had last year you don't understand the things that I've had to fight David said I killed the lion and I killed the bear and this giant will be nothing because it's not me doing the work it is God doing the work come on somebody it is God doing the work through me and if I could take down the lion and I can take down the bear, this uncircumcised Philistine will be no problem for God. When we step into the promised land, I came to tell you the walls of Jericho must fall. The city must be taken. Woo! Joshua tells the people, purge yourself, prepare yourself, position yourself. Because when you go into the promised land, it's time to conquer and take hold of every promise that God has given you. Take hold of that healing. Take hold of that breakthrough. Take hold of that thing that God says is yours. Caleb went into the promised land. He says, I've been waiting 40 years. Give me my mountain. This mountain belongs to me. Come on up and play. Give me my mountain. Give me my mountain. That's got to be your attitude this year. Don't go in sheepish with your head down. Don't go in sheepish and say, oh, it's going to be another bad year. Don't go in sheepish and say, well, I don't got it all together and all hell is breaking loose. Just go in saying, God, you're positioning me to take possession of every promise that you have given me. I'm going to get my mountain this year. I'm going to get my breakthrough this year. Come on and praise him right now. Don't give me no funeral music. Come on. We want to have revival. Some of you need to transition from the funeral to the wedding. Some of you need to come out of your depression this morning and come out of a spirit of fear. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. It's time for some of you to begin to wake up your faith. You haven't been through what I've been through, but I still got the fire of the Holy Ghost because if God be for me, who can be against me? Hold up. Break it down. I'm not pastoring some white church. When did you become so white? Coming in and doing the sign of the cross. Don't you understand? We are treasures out of darkness. We are called to give it praise. Hold up. And if you want to be dead, go to a dead church. But if you want to be dead, don't come to my church. This church is going to experience revival. It's time for you to open up your mouth, open up your praise, open up your voice. Anyone been delivered? Has anyone ever transitioned? Has anyone? Go ahead and praise him right now. Go ahead and praise him right now. Go ahead and praise him right now. I refuse to say the same. I refuse to stay in the same place. praisers in. Victory is in your praise. 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 Victory. Come on and praise them in this place. There you go.
If Sunday's going to be a funeral, don't come. If you're going to come into this place dead, don't come. Find another church. Go to another ministry. Make your transition now. But if you want the Holy Ghost and you want to come to a church that's alive and to listen to a preacher that's not dead, I don't teach. I preach. I prophesy. I lift up the Spirit. And if that's you, this is your church. What the Lord has done. I'm not gonna die. I'm transitioning. Who wants to transition with their pastor? from the Congo. See how they dance? Can y'all come up and join your pastor this morning? Can y'all come up here and join your pastor this morning? See, if anybody knows about transition, it's them. They came out of a country that was war-torn. There were people being enslaved and beat up. Come on up. But when they came to the United States of America, they transitioned from defeat to victory and look how grateful they are come on who wants to transition Yeah. 
transition for the glory of Jesus this morning. Hands all over this place. 